Hi folks, I'm Aslin Bloor from AZ Entertainment. Welcome to another episode of Savor the Flavor of Thanksgiving this time. Now with us, we, we've got two chefs cooking in their kitchens today and um, a few friends who've joined the party. Before we go over to the chefs who are from the US and who are in the US, let's go to our international panelists. We'll start with the one on the left, who woke up at 4 o'clock in the morning, especially for this show. Let's go say hello to Candy. Hi, Candy. How are you? Hi, everybody. It's 4 o'clock. It's a crazy night. I'm fine. And I'm looking forward for this. Mm -hmm. You don't, you don't, I mean, we don't have Thanksgiving in the UK, but you most certainly don't have it in any shape or form at all in Japan, do you? Exactly. We don't celebrate Thanksgiving here in Japan. Okay. Not at all. Mm. Not okay, at all. great. Thanks, Kenny. We'll come at you in a bit, a little bit more. Let's go over uh, to Australia and say hello to AJ. Well, hello, world. It's a little bit later than Japan here. It's 6 a.m. So um, we don't celebrate. Some of us celebrate Thanksgiving. I've been to one Thanksgiving dinner and I was so tired afterwards because there was so much food. Um, it, was like, it was like Christmas in November. Um, I'm from Conjura. I'm absolutely passionate about food and I've got my own little brand and I'm very excited about this show because I love learning about other cultures so it's going to be good. Excellent. Thank you AJ. And 6 o'clock in the morning and sweating already I hear, yeah? Yes, it's going to be 30 today but yesterday it was 40 I think. It was really, really hot. Gosh, gosh, because of course you guys, you've got, you guys have got summer, haven't you? The start of summer now. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Righty ho. And let's go over to Sally, who is only about two hours away from me. Hi, Sally. Hi, Aslin. Thank you for having me again. And uh, uh, hello to everyone. As you all know me, Cook with Sally. I have a blog, uh, www.cookwithsally.com. And I am from the UK, and it's very warm at the moment for this time of the year. Usually it's freezing. It's near true Aslan, so it's not cold as last year. No. No, I don't know. Oh, I've had, no. had a little cold all day. I've had my jumper on all day in the house. No. You know, don't go to Japan. It's much more colder, okay? And our house, is set up. <laughs> our house is set up like the tropics, so if I was cold, it was cold. But never mind. Let's uh -huh. just get down to business. Now, we've got today, we've got Joy as well as Brittany cooking for us. What we're going to do, I tell you what, let's go say a quick hello. I'll ch uh, I, 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 I've i changed my mind. Let's go say a quick hello to Brittany, then we'll head over to Joy, who's going to start the cooking. Hi, Brittany. Hello. Excited to be here today and sharing uh, Thanksgiving with you guys, especially those that don't get to indulge in every year. Um, I'm with Cooking with Brittany and I will turn it back over to Joy to see what she's making. I'm excited to see what she has. Great, thank you. As, as, as we are. Hi Joy. Finally. Hello, ready. happy holidays. Um, as you can see I've already got something on the burner. Today I'll be giving you tips on how to make your mashed potatoes nice and creamy and we'll be making some homemade cranberry sauce far superior to the stuff you get in a can. <laughs> love, love, love your blouse, by the way. It's, it's, it's gorgeous. Right. Okay. Let's get started. What's, what's first? Um, what's up first? What are we doing? Uh, well, uh, the potatoes are just about coming to a boil. Um, rather, they're just about done uh, boiling. Um, they'll be tender in about two minutes. Uh, so, what I want to show you guys actually is the finished cranberry sauce. Now. Um, if you notice, there's a little bit of uh, extra liquid in there. I like a wetter cranberry sauce. If you want your cranberry sauce to be more firm, like the stuff in a can, more like jelly, um, might I suggest that you add um, a few tablespoons of orange marmalade. So now what I'm doing is I'm just adding cranberries, the raw cranberries, to the pan with about a half cup of water and, believe it or not, an entire cup of sugar. Okay. So you like your cranberry sauce uh, less tart, not necessarily. There's really no other way to do it because if you don't put enough sugar in, then it's just basically inedible. I mean, it's just amazing how much sugar you actually need to make a good cranberry sauce. Mm. Mm. Joy, 
can I just ask you, with with the cranberry sauce, the yeah, adding of the, the micro cluster uh, there, uh, got a utensil. Sorry, hang on. Okay, we've got a we've got a question from from um from AJ in Australia, Joyce. We're just going to go over to AJ. Yes, you were saying AJ. I was I was saying Joy with with putting the marmalade into the cranberry. So you're relying on the pectin from the marmalade to thicken. Yes. Uh, sorry, relying on what? Okay, so wait. At this point in time, we shall just address one thing. I know Joy has an assistant in the house, so if you can turn up Joy's um, sound speakers, that would be really good at this point. <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh boy. Right, I, now that we've done that, AJ, let's go back to your question. The question is, in adding the marmalade, rather than adding a bit of gelatin or something, you're relying on the pectin from the marmalade to thicken the cranberries? Absolutely, and actually, um, because I prefer it on the looser side, I wouldn't even add gelatin. I don't um, make it as a cranberry jelly, I make it as a cranberry sauce. Yes. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so so we, we yeah we're just using the the, the um, citrus essentially the citrus to act as a thickener, but of course in your case you like it runny, don't you? Right. I, so what have you got? You've got the cranberries in the in the pan, and you've put a whole bowl of sugar in. Yes. <laughs> um, it's gonna form this really lovely syrup. Basically, you want to cook the cranberries for about 15 minutes. They're gonna pop. Uh, mm. They're gonna impart some of their juice, and they actually have a little bit of natural thickener inside, so they'll actually contribute to the thickness. Sauce. Okay. For the very end, you're going to add um, half uh, an orange, um, the juice of half an orange, and the zest of an entire orange. We don't get oranges anywhere near as big as that. <laughs> oh man, that's just not fair. Right. While while that's going on, let's go to Brittany and let Brittany tell us what she's cooking. What what you doing today, Brittany, for us? Um, I am doing two things. I have a sausage and cornbread stuffing. Um, everyone has different terms. It's either stuffing or dressing. Most people use bread. I use cornbread um, and spicy sausage and a lot of herbs for mine. And then the other thing is a Brussels sprout and um, butternut squash. I have butternut squash here that I've already cut up and I have roasting in the oven. We're just going to let those kind of go. Um, I coated those in pepper flakes, cayenne pepper. Those are my spicy addition to my roasted vegetables. Okay. Okay. So, so okay. what what are you what are you starting with first? So you you I'm put something in the oven already? Mm. Yeah. I have. Um, I'll show you guys really quick. I've got some roasted butternut squash. Okay. Yum. Yeah. Mm. And I already roasted some of the Brussels sprouts. I just cut them in half. Mm -hmm. and the first thing I'm going to do, I have my stove or my skillet already on. So I'm going to add some bacon, some sliced bacon into the pan because I like bacon and Brussels sprouts. So we'll let those cook for a little bit. Okay. And um, add my Brussels sprouts and whip it here in a few minutes after they have kind of crisped up a little bit more. So I'm going to let those go. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and talk about the cornbread stuffing because I've already pretty much done everything for that. Okay. I have cornbread already in here. The cornbread, it's best to make like three days ahead of time. Okay. You really want the cornbread to sit out and dry out. You want it to be stale. So I usually do this, like I'm making mine tomorrow for Thanksgiving, my cornbread. So you want it to dry out, and you're going to add chicken stock to it. Okay. Chicken stock to the cornbread, yeah? So it's going to absorb yeah. all of that lovely... Mm. And just never had to add cornbread. Okay. And you then... I have a spicy sausage. Um, I add red pepper flakes and cayenne pepper to mine just to up the spice level. Um, okay. It's been sautéed with onions, garlic, celery, some sage, and rosemary. Okay. Add it in. All right. Usually I would go on this hands first, but since you guys don't want the messy hands, I'm going to use a spoon. Okay. Okay. 
and the cornbread, the cornbread were, um, I saw them in fairly big chunks. They weren't, you didn't zap them in a chopper or, or anything. Oh. No, I just okay. them up about an inch, okay. um, cube, and just uh, cube them up that way. Some of it will start to break down, but then you get some of the bigger chunks that when you bake it again in the casserole, it's nice and crispy. So I leave it in big chunks. And then we're going to add in dried cranberries. Okay. Just add those into it, and then I go, this is your last step before going into the oven. So I just pour it into a baking dish. Okay. And that's it. And you bake it for? It bakes for about 30 minutes. You're just waiting for the top to get golden brown. Okay. Um, and uh, it's at, set at 400. Somehow okay. I put everything at 400, so... Just cool. about 30 minutes. Okay, cool. That's so we're just we're just going to just hop on over back to uh, back to um, Joy because I know she's drained the potatoes. Have you drained the potatoes, Joy? You're on mute, by the way, so we won't be won't be able to hear you. That's correct. I have drained the potatoes. Um, I like to leave a tiny bit of water in the bottom because it actually helps with the consistency. Mm -hmm. So at this point, um, I would mash right in your pot. Um, again, water that's left over a little bit that kind of helps with the consistency. Now, I like to leave the skins on, but that's really a matter of preference. I've heard that the skins have a lot of vitamins, um, but I, I actually partly just prefer the flavor. So once you um, have mashed around the potatoes in a circular motion, try to uh, get your masher, um, and I like this style masher. It's actually uh, considered one of the better ones. Try to get your masher all the way down when you're mashing, and then add your butter. Um, about almost a tablespoon per potato. You really want a lot of butter if you really want some successful mashed potatoes. Uh, once the butter has melted in and you've worked it into the mashed potatoes, then you're going to add a little bit of milk. Um, okay. Which I your kitchen assistant for okay. I thought I thought I thought the assistant the assistant should be mashing the the, the potato really because <laughs> okay. I'm looking a bit tired there. I don't know. If you, uh, <laughs> Everybody say hi to Joy's husband's hand. Hi. 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 <laughs> All right. Can I ask something about Joy's, I um, mean, the sauce? Yeah, go on, Candy. Yes? Yeah. You mentioned a while ago that uh, the orange marmalade, okay? Mm -hmm. put, uh, he, she just put in the sauce. She says, okay. if you want, if you want to. Can you can you use an apple sauce? I mean, an apple marmalade for this. I um, suppose that you are you talking about apple butter? It, yeah, it, yeah, um, exactly. Oh, um, I mean, much more for all of those things. Yeah, sorry. Um, for a thickener, you can actually use really anything. Oh, okay. Uh, but the reason that you use orange marmalade is because orange and cranberry are amazing together. Oh, now you I should, know. Now you, I should, should, and Penny, you should know this because when we were doing the Halloween show, did you have a cocktail with cranberry, vodka, and orange juice? Yes. 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 Yeah. So there we go. Let's, while, while, while Joy is mashing the spuds, let's go back to Brittany and see what's up. Okay, right now I'm just still uh, getting my bacon nice and crispy. It's about halfway there, so I'm going to go ahead and add my Brussels sprouts. I've already okay. roasted these, but I like when they get nice and caramelized from the bacon and the bacon fat. Okay. So I'm going to add these into the pot and let them continue cooking. And I'm going to season those with salt and pepper and... A little bit of uh, olive oil on top. So we're just going to let these go still on medium heat to continue to caramelize and continue cooking the bacon. Okay, and this is this is your side dish of Brussels sprouts and, and, and bacon. Right, yeah. yeah. It's Brussels sprouts, bacon, and we'll toss in the um, our spicy butternut squash that's in the oven right now. That's right, okay. All right, cool. Okay. Can I, can I just ask Brittany, um, that's a, a fairly significant difference from us with the stuffing that is made. 
because we stick it in the bird when we cook it. Do you is, is ever that not have to do that? that bird? Have you ever cooked one in the bird? Usually, if um, anytime I've seen stuffing, it's its own side dish. I've seen people okay. cook the turkey and then add the stuffing into the bird afterwards. I'm not sure why, if it's more so for presentation, but I've never seen them cook it. I've heard of people doing it, I've just never seen it. It's quite interesting, isn't it? Because it's becoming more and more um, of a of a habit, even here, um, of serving the stuffing uh, completely on its side, whether in a in a in a dish or as little stuffing balls. I'm just I'm just going to um, say give a quick shout out to people in the in the um, in the audience. Bruno Miguel Santos, who claims that Portuguese oranges are the biggest in the world, um, and. Um, and Chef Nell wants some oranges as well. Oh my, we've got a long little comment here that I shall pass over. All right, let's go back to Joy, who's drained the potatoes, who's mashed the potatoes. So Joy, tell us the secret of your fluffy mashed potatoes. Okay, um, there's actually a few secrets that you have to follow. Um, one thing is, you want the potatoes to retain some water um, after you've drained them, but that doesn't mean you want them to be waterlogged. Mm. Uh, to that end, I would recommend cutting them much larger and just cooking them a little longer until they're tender. Even overcook them a little bit. Um, if you were just going to eat boiled potatoes, try to cook them a little bit longer than uh, you would normally like your boiled potatoes. Uh, another big tip is the way you mash them. So uh, the heat from the pan will help a lot. Um, you want to mash down and around the outside of the pan going to the inside in a spiral before adding the butter. Uh, after you add the butter, then just add milk until it's the consistency you want. I don't know if you can see, but these are really wonderful yeah, creams. They, they look amazing. Um, one note about seasoning, I seasoned the w water with salt um, when I was cooking the potatoes, and I will uh, be adding cracked pepper a little later. Okay, one quick question. What do you think of the practice of um, uh, using beaters, you know, egg beaters, for your mash? Mm -hmm. Egg beaters. Um, I haven't tried that. Uh, I love the consistency I get with this method. It's really, really okay. Good. You haven't tried that. Okay, cool. Um, we will go back to Brittany um, in a minute. Brittany, have you got anything to any, anything to continue, or is, are things still cooking away? Um, I am slicing, just thinly slicing some shallots. Okay. I just uh, cut the ends off, take the skin off, cut them in half. Okay. And thinly slice. And I'm adding those to my Brussels sprouts and bacon. Okay. And just so those can finish sauteing with it and just get a little soft. Um, sometimes when I make this, I toss the uh, shallots and flour and I'll fry them to the top. Mm -hmm. and it's just kind of a play on a green bean casserole is a big deal in the U.S. for Thanksgiving. I don't personally like it, so I try and add in... Sometimes I'll do the fried shallots on top as an ode to green bean casserole. Okay. Joy talked about the green bean casserole. Okay, so we, we, we're talking a bit of flexibility. Um, we've got a comment here that I will bring up um, from Anna. That uh, She's just echoing every uh, everyone's comments here. Joy, that's for you. Your dress is so gorgeous. Oh, thank you. <laughs> There we go. We've all we've all said that. And and Bruno Miguel Santos. Let's bring his. Um, when is uh, well he he wants to know when there's the Portuguese cooking show uh, <laughs> coming soon. Well, you know the answer to that. Find me a Portuguese chef, and you can have a Portuguese show. We had one from Spain earlier in the year um, as well. I don't know if you guys remember that. Right. So Joy, cranberries. Back to the cranberries. Yes. So um, I actually saw them uh, pop in the midst of all that foaming um, and heard them. Uh, so I can see that they're split somewhat, which uh, means it's the last two to three minutes of cooking. So I'm adding my orange zest, um, about the zest of one orange, but not quite the whole orange, depending on how much cranberry sauce you're making. Uh, this one is actually a cup and a half of cranberries to a cup of water, which will make probably four small servings. So this is actually a very, very small, just a manageable size for me to cook on the show. Mm, I, I love lots of cranberries. So you've matched your blouse to the sauce then today, haven't you? <laughs> and the lipstick, and the lipstick, yes. 
<laughs> and I was thinking of Japanese maples. They're so pretty and they remind me of me. Oh. Ah, yeah. Ah, right. I think Brittany's got something to show us. Brittany? All right. My uh, roasted butternut squash are done. I don't know if you can see how they look. Oh, beautiful color. But I'm going to go ahead and add those into the pan here. And this is about finished up, so I'm going to start plating this dish here in a minute. Okay. Turn that off, and I have festive plates, but the colors on this just look better with lights. Yeah, definitely. It should be. It should be. Joy, are you are you okay waiting while um Brittany plates up? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just make sure right. nothing's burning over there on the west coast. <laughs> okay, so I put this in a serving platter, and I'm not sure how well you guys can see. We can, oh, yeah. That's that's great. Beautiful colors in there. That's nice. Yeah, really great colors. I can imagine it makes such an attractive um, um, dish on the table, on the full table. Yeah, that's why I end up adding the butternut squashes. Mm. I love the flavor of them, but the color with the green just really pops, and you don't end up with this just green or caramelized looking colors from the Brussels sprouts. You've got the pops of the orange in there. So and, and, and a great combination of textures as well. The leafy yeah. texture, the crunch, and then the softness of the squash. Yeah, definitely. Great. And your 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 um, um stuffing is in the oven, isn't it? It's still in the oven, yes. Okay, so we'll go back we'll go back to Joy. All righty, Joy. Okay, so um I um I'm gonna try to hold this up to the camera so you can kind of see the consistency. Yeah, if you move them move it over to above the oranges we should be able to see. Move it oh. to above yeah, and right there. Here? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Um so you can kind of see um, it's actually a, still a little bit loose. Um, it's very easy to reduce. You can just keep it on the lowest possible heat setting and just keep letting it reduce. Um, it will eventually achieve the consistency that you want if you like a more jelly cranberry sauce. Mm. So it just you keep going. And how many how how many um, uh, side dishes do you normally have when you who do, okay this is going to be a tough one. You just got married. Where are you celebrating Thanksgiving this year, husband or your family? Uh, actually, usually we go down to um, Southern California, so um, Anaheim, uh, the town where the yeah. land is. Mm -hmm. uh, my husband grew up in Anaheim, so uh, we'll gather there and we'll have a big Thanksgiving with his family. They make everything. I usually just bring the bourbon pumpkin cheesecake. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I'll have the cheesecake. Everybody else can. <laughs> Me too. I'll have the cheesecake. Cool. Right, Brittany. Uh, wh wh how many how many sides do you tend to have at, at your family gathering? Um, we have a lot. Like my dad will fry the turkey. He's in charge of that. Um, and then we have ham as well, and probably like ten sides. Um, my family's big on pies for Thanksgiving, mm. so we have lots of pies. Mm. Um, so then I will be making pies this week with my sister. So. It'll be, uh, we usually have a lot, more than we need. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it isn't, isn't that always the case, yeah. What, what, Sally, for you, I mean, we don't, don't do Thanksgiving, but Christmas, do you have lots of side dishes for Christmas, Sally? Yes, I do. I, uh, I do at least uh, four or five, and I will do two, three meats. I don't just do turkey. I do turkey, and I do, like, steak, like, sirloin, beef, and I sometimes I do gammon, so... Okay. I spoil them so everybody's got choice and then you've got all left over next day for cold buffy. Yeah. That's nice, isn't it? That's nice, yeah. So, um, Joy, are, are you done, basically? So you have the cranberry and you have the mash. So, okay, great. So we're just waiting for um, gosh, all sorts of servings, services going on. We're just waiting for Brittany. Waiting for Brittany and her. Ah, I think she's just bringing out her cornbread stuffing. Right. So we're going to go back to Brittany. You're not going to be able to see the color as much on here. Um, oh, it, is there a taking photo? Yeah, if you, if, you, if you turn the other way around so that you're. you're, you're no, you're, that's it because the light's on the other side. That's it. Perfect. Great. Yeah, that's gorgeous. 
wanted to get a nice golden brown. Um, sometimes I add in some more of the dried cranberries on the top just for the pop of color. Um, but usually just nice golden brown, and then you let it set for about 10 minutes, and then it's ready to serve. So how, how do you serve it up? Do you cut it up in slices? Because, you know, we don't do um, that stuffing. Uh, do you cut it yeah. up in slices? Um, usually everything is family style when we serve it up. So okay. it has a spoon, and you just kind of you, okay. you go through it with the spoon and put it on your plate. Uh, if you let it set for maybe about 20 minutes just to cool, you should be able to get slices out of it um, so it's more uniform. Okay, sounds. I'm just going to bring up a comment here about about your Brussels sprout. Extraordinary flavors with your Brussels sprouts. I can't talk anymore with your Brussels sprouts. Yeah. There we go. It is. We, we all we all definitely definitely agree with that. So, um, can we find the recipes anywhere? Have you ladies blogged your recipes, Brittany? Have you blogged your recipes yet? Tonight, uh, or at least shortly after this. That's why I should take pictures of the finished product, and they'll be up. Everything yeah, else. No, 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 no rush. No rush. If those for those of you who are watching and you like the recipes, just make sure you're following Brittany and you are following Joy. So when they post the recipes on G Plus or on Foodies Plus, where we are all members of, um, you can you. You'll, you'll get the um, uh, notification for that. Joy, what about you? Have you blogged um, recipes yet? Well, um, basically, they're very, very simple recipes. Um, it's more about tips. Uh, that actually isn't a bad idea, though, because a lot of people struggle with um, how to make their mashed potatoes pop this time of year. I have, I have a question for you, Joy, if that's OK. Go on. Right, you ready? Joy, you know you, you, your mashed potato it sounds lovely. I, I, I like good uh, mashed potato. Um, do you have any specific potato you make it with? Because I know there is two potato you make it with. Is there any specific potato to make it with? You know, actually, that's a very good question. Um, as far as actual uh, mashed potatoes versus smashed potatoes, which are a little bit different, though, um, mashed potatoes uh, really have the best consistency when you cross it. Or um, big baking potato. Those are really the best potatoes to use for mashed potatoes. Okay. Um, it's, it's, I, I just wanted to go back to something you said earlier when you were doing the spuds. Um, you you leave this you leave the skin on, don't you? You said. Mm -hmm. That's really that's really interesting because I have never done mashed potato with skin on. I mean, when I cook curries and stuff, the potatoes go in with their skin on. Mm -hmm. So so what happens to the skin? Does it break down? It really depends on how um, large your potatoes uh, get cut up. Actually, um, perhaps uh, you guys can kind of see the pieces of the potatoes. Yes, you can see shades in there, can't you? Mm. Yeah, and um, I think some people don't prefer to bite down on a little piece yeah. of skin, but I actually I enjoy the taste it contributes. Mm. Okay. Potatoes, and I keep it on too. Go on, Brittany. Sorry, say that again. I said we like I'll use red potatoes and we keep the skin on on ours too. I prefer them like that. We just smash ours like joy. Um, but I think a lot of people around, at least where I live at, are starting to go in that direction. Can I uh, let me ask you this question because Joy said it and I, I didn't I didn't um, comment on it. Now you guys are using the word mash and smash. Mm -hmm. What's the difference? Ah. You want to be or? <laughs> because to us, I think in the UK there is only mash. <laughs> this is kind of a new idea, and I think it's actually more an American idea than anything else. So basically, it's like the lazy man's way to mash your potatoes. Mm. Um, it actually um, creates a different kind of a texture. It's just as rich as the regular mashed potatoes, but uh, it opens up a lot more potatoes that you can use for the same dish. Uh, one of my favorites for smashed potatoes, for example, is Yukon Gold um, with a little lemon zest. Awesome. So, no, no. so what, what, what is the actual difference? Are you still going like that? You yeah. are, but not quite following through to make a consistent uh, mash. Right. Sorry. I got it. Okay, okay. One, one is, one is cre creamy-ish, whereas the other one is in bits. Okay. Rustic. rustic. Ah, very nice. <laughs> Somebody said rustic. Oh, AJ, AJ, you got something to say? Go on, AJ. 
I was I was going to say that we we do a form of it where we would um, boil the potato or steam it, and then you just press it down in the fry pan so it's kind of mm. squashed, mm. but it's not mashed, and that's the difference. Mm. And the other thing I was going to say, whoever asked about using the beater on the mashed potato, the one thing that you, you find and Joy probably has, I'm lazy so I tried it, um, but the reality is that if you overwork the potato, it can become very, very gluey. Rubbery, yeah. Mm. And, and, and just like glue and mm. it's not pleasant at all. And that's why it's better to hand mash it in my opinion. I think Joy would agree with that. Mm. Yes, because I, I I've seen I've seen chefs um, um, using a food processor for their mashed potato, and, and and it's a fine line, isn't it, between being perfect and being being rubbery. Too right. Yeah. Have I we? I do mine the same. Go on, Sally. Hmm? I do mine. I, I I was brought up in France. That's how we do it. We boil it. We boil the potato with the skin. We peel the skin, and I've got it there hanging. It's like woolen. You you actually turn your do you know what I mean? It's like a little yeah. snow, and then we put it with butter and lots of butter and milk and okay. cream, and it's just amazing. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Okay, just like right. in Japan too. So it's, it's almost the same. It's the same, yeah. So basically, we're doing this. We 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 have the same methods of doing mashed potato most for the most part around the world. Right. <laughs> so there you go, folks. We have had from Joy. We've had the perfect mashed potato. Um, or potato, uh, or potato, potato. Anyway, you get. You know. um, from Joy, mashed potato, and we've had cranberry sauce as well. Um, recipes um, will probably be posted over the next next few days. But as Joy said herself, it's they're such easy recipes to do. And um, from Brittany, we had cornbread stuffing. She used some sausages, some spices, and cornbread, and she also did a fantastic. Brussels sprouts with squash, butternut squash, and bacon, which resulted in a fantastic dish, a very colorful dish. So, what I'm going to do is go back to the chefs and uh, for a final word before we say goodbye. For a final word and goodbye, chefs, and then the panelists will say goodbye and you will all sign off for the day. So, we'll, we'll, we'll start with Joy. Last words, Joy, on, on celebrations, on Thanksgiving, on your menus. You know, um, you're going to be forgiven for a bad dish much more than you're going to be forgiven for ignoring your family on Thanksgiving. So it's really all about family. Um, check out my blog, uh, Joyous Kitchen, and uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Great. Wow, that ain't that the truth? Don't forget the family. That's mm -hmm. it. And Brittany. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you for having me here for your Thanksgiving special on Savor to Flavor. I had a lot of fun. My first cooking demo, so I appreciate the opportunity, and I hope all of you guys have happy holidays, and maybe these can carry over to Thanksgiving for the non-Thanksgiving, or carry over to Christmas for the non-Thanksgiving people. So uh, check out the recipes. I'll have them up either today or tomorrow on cookingwithbrittany.com. Excellent. You did just remind me that this is indeed your very first actual cooking show. Oh, wow. First time you've ever yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well done. My first time actually cooking. Yeah, that's right. Well, well done. Great job. Two recipes as well. <laughs> Both Both feet in. Right, where to start? What were you saying, Joy? Were you saying something? Oh. He jumped in with both feet. Absolutely, yeah. both feet. He has one for each. Oh, never mind. Don't go there. Right. <laughs> let's go say. Let's say goodbye, Candy. Yeah. Well, this is a very nice dish. Uh, I, I'm really going to sneak those recipes, and one day I'll try to mm, make some of this mm, to a special <laughs> occasion. Anyway, this one is great. Yes, I and think it's really great. Thank you very much. I really like it. So Candy, much. thank you for waking up at four o'clock in the morning to join us. We always yeah. love having you with us, even even if no you are grumpy on Halloween night. Ah. <laughs> All right, let's, let's say goodbye to to AJ in Australia. Thank you for having me, and girls, thank you so much. I really enjoyed that, and um, I'll be doing the cranberry the cranberry sauce. 
um, and the stuffing was really interesting too. So thank you very much. I love the concept of Thanksgiving and um, there's a lot of similarity for me between that and what happens at Christmas. So thank you very much and I'm at conjureup.com so, you know, if anybody wants to go and have a look there, great. Okay. And, of course, of, and of course you have your own show. Oh yes, sorry Aslan, yes. <laughs> I have um, Fun Fabulous Food Down Under on the third Sunday of every month and um, we'll be doing a Christmas show next, like everybody else I guess, but it should be fun. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Right. And Sally, let's say goodbye to Sally. Thank you for having me, Lynn. And uh, uh, Brittany, I have never cooked with uh, cornbread, but I would love to try it. I've never seen it in the UK, I have to say. Uh, thank you for your dishes, beautiful. And Joy, thank you very much. And I think the marmalade with the cranberry is a fantastic idea. My husband loves cranberry. I don't very much, but I'm sure it would be lovely the way you make it. Um, and thank you for having me. And um, you all know me. Uh, if you check me out on uh, www.cookwithsally.com. And um, hopefully I'll be cooking for you soon. Yeah. Isn't that right, Lynn? Absolutely. Right. Thank you so much. Brittany, enjoy. Thank you so much for all those recipes, four recipes. Um, I, I love cranberry sauce. Um, Christmas mm -hmm. isn't the same without cranberry sauce. And yes, I do like the idea of Thanksgiving as well. Mm -hmm. We homeschool, so we have been doing Thanksgiving in our house with my little kids explaining to their projects and all that this week. So, thank you so much for joining us for our Thanksgiving special. Um, next week after Thanksgiving we will be doing a series of Christmas shows with everybody possible on G Plus where cooking is concerned. So come back to us for that. Sally will be cooking as I'm sure join Brittany and Candy. Everyone will be involved as well. So, thank you so much for watching to everyone in the audience. Bruno, Chef Nell, Anna, Elena, I'm sorry if I've missed anybody. Jamal, thank you so much for watching. Um, if anybody wants to cook, you know where to find me. Come and, come and get in touch with me and we'll take it forward. Thank you so much, guys. For those of you celebrating Thanksgiving, have a really good one with your family. Yes. Bye now. <laughs>